Welcome everybody to uh, Brewhouse Yard, the, the home of Lambinern, London. Really what we're here to talk about is some findings that we have made on what are the drivers of value in brands, specifically looking at how branding, the business that, that we at Lambinern are in, uh, what role does it play, what's its significance, it, and, and looking at that in the context of the total mix, if you like, of things that brands might choose to invest in. If you're in the business of advertising, it's quite easy to measure that, quite easy to look at how a campaign uh, drives audience reach, how it can impact on sales, etc. When you're in the branding business, like we are though, it's a much harder question to answer because brands, we all know, are built in a slightly different way. They're built longer term, often takes a long time to yield the results of brand building. They have many different partners or constituencies that need to come together to deliver successful uh, brand, successful branding. What we found when we looked at the change in financial value of the world's uh, top 100 brands over a 10 year period is that those brands that were perceived by consumers around the world to have strong brands and strong advertising had grown in value by 168%. The total pool of value, if you like, of those brands was $42.5 billion. But if your brand is perceived as strong by consumers and your advertising is strong, your growth is 168% over 10 years. And compare that to brands where the branding is perceived by consumers to not be as strong, but the advertising is still strong. In other words, your advertising is great, but your branding could be stronger. The growth in value of those brands over 10 years was 27%. Other statistics that are interesting in these findings, when your branding is strong but your advertising is not perceived as strong by consumers, the change in value is 76%. So again, compare that, you can spend many tens of millions on advertising, drive growth at 27%, or you can spend a fraction of that on driving a strong brand. You can drive a strong brand and drive growth of 76%. Again, quite a remarkable difference. Brands that are perceived to have neither strong advertising nor, or let's say, less strong advertising or less strong branding, still grown in value from the database we looked at of 21%, which again suggests that the differential you get if all you focus on is strong advertising is really not actually as great as you might expect. The differential between growing or investing in strong branding from a position of either strong advertising or weak advertising is massive. This is the first time that anyone has quantified the value that strong branding can add to organizations. I think that's significant on two levels, actually, not just because there is very definitely a correlation between brands that have a high financial value and the way in which consumers show a propensity to interact with them, buy them, etc. but also it's a shareholder value issue or an enterprise value issue because if your brand is valued highly, then your enterprise is valued highly. So to me, this is solid, hard evidence that branding delivers a superior return to businesses, to enterprises, uh, when, as, when used either in conjunction or sometimes even instead of advertising. I want to get our panel up now so we can discuss those findings in more details. You may have many questions about this as we go through. We'll take an opportunity to, to, uh, to uh, we'll give you an opportunity to ask those of the panel uh, in a moment. But uh, Peter, if I can start with you. Of course, the, the data looks great. Of course it does. Um, but why should we trust it? I mean, how is the data gathered? How robust is the analysis? Uh, how reliable is all of this? Well, of course, I've got a vested interest in saying it's absolutely brilliant because I did it. Uh, but it is based on the uh, Brandsy database, which we've been running uh, for 17 years now. But the particular data set I looked at uh, were the brands that we had valued 10 years ago and the same brands uh, today and looking at those brands and their change in value. And those are the figures that you've shown, Jim. Incidentally, I would say advertising is a very, very powerful force, <laughs> uh, but it just needs to be connected to branding in order to work. That, to me, is, is a key finding. It's not, you know, not against advertising in any way. In fact, you know, powerful advertising is a massive value multiplier. What is great branding other than the, the answer to the questions that Peter has just uh, outlined? Yeah, and it's worth talking about this. Is, I mean, 
we, we debated this when we were talking about this in the beginning, when we had our first meeting. This is brand in that we're talking about here. So and we're trying to isolate brand in because there's brand valuation and, and there's lots of brand valuation measures. And so it's important to say, well, what does great brand in add? And it's not one simple answer to this. There's a whole number of different parts to what makes great brand in. And I think at Lambinam, we, we talk about dynamic brand dynamic brand in because actually the world in which we operate now we need to consider brands which are relevant and branding that's relevant for that world and the world in which we live in is, is changed considerably compared to what it was 10 years ago you know it's multi-platform it, you know brands are required to um, develop content experiences so we're looking for brands that are able to respond to that world and and branding solutions that allow us to do that because brands need to evolve they need to flex they need to respond to opportunity as and when it presents itself. They need to be nimble. Brands need a constant core, something that's going to be the, 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 the roadmap, almost the, the thing that does the unchanging thing while everything else around it is changing. And then in addition to that, obviously, we've got unique visual, visual assets and they're assets which actually can, again, be adaptable and maximise the potential of the brand on whatever stage they're shining on and, you know, and let them shine. And then I think... Holding all of this together is the need for brands to be authentic. Um, and, and, and that's really what we do here, is about creating brands that are authentic, which actually can shine on stage. And it's not just about the creation, actually. I think what's really important to talk about here, and I mean, this measures are over 10 years' worth of data. It's not just about creating a brand and then walking away. It's also about how has that brand managed itself and managed to contain that authenticity and that constant core over a long time. So, I mean, great branding is all of those things, I would argue. What shocks and appalls me, Jim, is it's taken you lot this long to try, <laughs> to try and measure anything about, about the impact of branding. You know, you can't sit here and say, oh, well, it's easy for advertising because they can measure themselves. Advertising is an enormously complex ecosystem that has managed very well to measure across millions of platforms and formats, and, and Peter, I think, will agree with me on this. You know, at Millwood Brown, you do a lot of this. It's a big business. You could just as easily measure branding. You're going to say, well, clients won't spend the money on it because they don't spend that much on branding, to which I say, well, you're in the middle of a graveyard spiral, guys. So <laughs> maybe time to start trying to track mm. what you do. Mm. Yeah, I'm 100% with you, Jim, on we knew this was true intuitively, but to me, you're just at first base. And, and I would encourage you now to spend a bit more time and effort to dig underneath and say which components mm. of the things that Claire has been talking about are the real drivers here. Brand marketing men's mothers see ads on the telly. And it's, that's a very seductive <laughs> thing, you know? And it explains easily what you do. You know, you can point at the advert and say, I did that. Yeah. Uh, I think that touches on the, the, the bigger point, which yeah. is, you know, to unpick what branding means and mm -hmm. this study as i agree with you entirely i think is a great start but uh, does it does it not go far enough yet how, how do you say what 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 is the implication of this for you as a as you know a... i won't talk about o2 specifically too much but you know o2 was created as a business around the brand, brand. and is mm -hmm. one of the great case studies of how mm -hmm. brand can drive business and everything that good can, can come from that. I think the interesting thing about this, in, in, with my Telefonica more corporate hat on, is it opens, perhaps opens a door to discuss uh, this kind of issue with very senior management. Um, because there are plenty of people at Telefonica who aren't marketing savvy, they don't understand what someone means when they talk about brand. Brand is advertising, you know, a lot of people in Telefonica, brand is advertising. Yeah. And that's kind of the sum of it. And, and clearly this study points towards, you know, a world which, you know, I'm sure all of us in this room uh, are more than aware of, which is that when you have all of the constituent elements of, of a strong brand developed well, you know, with a great identity and, and a strong sense of itself and, and the kind of propositions it takes to market, and then you advertise the hell out of that in a really creative way, that is the perfect world mm -hmm. that we're describing. 